Welcome to the readings for the 5th of June, which are Joshua's chapter 23 and 24, Isaiah chapter 29, and Hebrews chapter 12. So, reading from Joshua's chapters 23 and 24. And it came to pass, a long time after that, Yahweh had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all Israel, and for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age, and ye have seen all that Yahweh your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For Yahweh your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes, from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even the great sea westward. And Yahweh your God, he shall expel them from before you, and drive them out, out of you, from out of your sight. And ye shall possess their land, as Yahweh your God hath promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, Neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them. Neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. But cleave unto Yahweh your God, as ye have done unto this day. For Yahweh hath driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for Yahweh your God, he it is that fighteth for you, as he hath promised you. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that, le that ye love Yahweh your God. Else, if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of those nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and shall go into them, and they unto you, know for a certainty that Yahweh your God will no more drive any out any of these nations from before you. But they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from this good land which Yahweh your God hath given you. And behold, this day I am go going the way of all the earth. And ye know that your hearts, and ye know in all your hearts, and in all your souls, that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which Yahweh your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore it shall come to pass, that as all good things are come upon you, which Yahweh your God promised you, so shall Yahweh bring upon you all evil things, until he have destroyed you from off this good land which Yahweh your God hath given you. When ye have transgressed the covenant of Yahweh your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of Yahweh be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given you. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith Yahweh God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Jacob, and I gave unto Isaac, Jacob and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also, and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them, and afterward I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued you after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto Yahweh, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them, and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt, and ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side Jordan, and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. 
Then Balak the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam the son of Beor to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam, therefore he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of his hand. And ye went over Jordan and came unto Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Girgashites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labour, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them. Of the vineyards and the olive yards which ye planted, do not eat. Which ye planted not, do ye eat. Now therefore, fear Yahweh, and serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye Yahweh. And if it seem evil unto you to serve Yahweh, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose lands ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other gods. For, for Yahweh our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and <clears throat> which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And Yahweh drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve Yahweh, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve Yahweh, for he is a holy God, and he is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If ye forsake Yahweh and turn to strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve Yahweh. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you Yahweh to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart to Yahweh, God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, Yahweh our God will we serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in, a, in the book of the law of God, and took a great stone, and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of Yahweh. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard the words which of Yahweh which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua led the, let the people depart, every man unto his inheritance. And it came to pass after those things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of, the servant of Yahweh, died, being an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance, in timnath Sirah, which is in Mount Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gaash. And Israel served Yahweh all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, which had known all the works of Yahweh, which he had done for Israel. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel had brought out of Egypt, buried there in Shechem, in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for an hundred pieces of silver. And it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. And Eliezer the son of Aaron died, and they buried him in a hill that pertained unto Phinehas's son, which was given to him in Mount Ephraim. Reading from Isaiah in chapter 29. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt! Add ye year to year, let them kill sacrifices. Yet I will distress Ariel, and there shall there be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. And I will camp against thee round about, and will lay siege against thee with a mount, and I will raise forts against thee. And thou shalt be brought down, and shalt speak 
out of the ground, and thy speech shall be low out of the dust, and thy voice shall be as of one that hath a familiar spirit, out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust, and the multitude of terrible ones shall be as chaff that passeth away. Yea, it shall be as an in instant suddenly. Thou shalt be visited of Yahweh with Yahweh of hosts, with thunders, and with, l and with earthquake, and great noise, with storm and tempest, and flame of devouring fire. And the multitudes of all nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her munition, and that distress her, shall be as a dream of a night vision. It shall be, even, <clears throat> it shall even be, as when an hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man drink, dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Stay yourselves, and wonder, cry ye out, and cry, they are drunken. And they're not with wine, they stagger, but not with strong drink. For Yahweh hath poured out upon you the spirit of a deep sleep, and hath closed your, the eyes of the prophets and your rulers, the seers he hath covered. And the vision of all is become of you, as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore, the Lord said, For as much as this people draweth near unto me with their mouth, and with their lips do honour me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by precepts, the precept men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvellous work among this people, even a marvellous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe well unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from Yahweh, and from their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Surely the turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the thing framed <clears throat> say of him that framed it, He hath no understanding? It is not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be as esteemed as the forest. In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in Yahweh, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. That make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Therefore thus saith Yahweh, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall now be ashamed, neither shall his face wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name, and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to me, shall come to understanding. And they that murmured, the epistle to the Hebrews and the twelfth chapter. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so, so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of, of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such a contradiction of sinners against him, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. 
My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he received. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with his sons. For what son is he who the father chasteneth not? But be ye without, but if ye be without chastisement, wherefore are all the partakers? Wherefore all are partakers? Then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasteners, chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it doth yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness, and to them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore lift up the heads which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest. And the sound of the trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they heard, entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touch with the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and ecclesia of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the perfect and the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse him, refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, who refused him, or that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape, if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more sh I shake the earth, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removal of those things that are shaken, as of those things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire.